Hey, Philip. What's up, dude? Dude, Adam. What's long, going on? Long time and no see. Yeah, yeah. What have you been up to? You know, I've just been studying abroad here in Argentina. Argentina? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Dude, that's where I'm at. Really? Where are you, where are you studying at? Rosario. No way, dude. I, I'm studying in Rosario. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Dude. That's awesome. That's sick, man. Sweet. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we should catch up and get a beer or something. Yeah, you, you know, I, I can. I'm a, I've got this project midterm next week. Ah, oh, man. What are you doing? It's, uh, it's for a human rights class. Yeah. It's on uh, slavery. Alright, alright. Slavery? Los derechos humanos son los derechos fundamentales que todo hombre tiene por hecho de ser hombre. Y se viola cuando la raptás porque la privás de, de su libertad, de su cuerpo, de su decisión. Eso es abusar, romper ese derecho. Military. Service. Hey, can you see that? Possibly. Yeah. Oh, you mean you're just gonna film it? Damn. I didn't know that slavery still happens. Man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a lot bigger than it was in the past. You know, it's something like a lot of people don't know about. And like, uh, you know, there's like 27 million people in the world today that are enslaved. Man, that's like, that's like two times the size of Buenos Aires. It's like the most it's ever been throughout history. Um, ¿Por qué creen que existe todavía la esclavitud en el mundo, por ejemplo? Para mí se relaciona mucho con la pobreza, que siempre hay, que eso se combate con la educación, que hay personas con mucho poder, que son muy egoístas y que no les importa a lo mejor abusar o privar a libertad a otras personas, porque se gana mucho dinero, lamentablemente, con esto. Y como no hay infraestructuras, no hay formas de evitar o parar todos este, estos delitos y estos crímenes que, que cada vez sorprenden más que en el siglo XXI sigan pasando estas cosas. Well, then, I just want to know, like, who, who, like, you know, deserves this right to not be a slave, and, like, who's supposed to, you know, enforce this right, and, like, you know, who's violating it? Do you have any idea? I, you know, I was, I'm still trying to get through the beginning. Yeah, I, I feel it. But, uh, oh, I actually, I got this friend, you know, over in, uh, over in Rosario as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, she knows a thing or two about a thing or two about slavery. So I was that thinking would, maybe I can give her a call. I'll take her a call. Okay, let's see. Actually, I'm um, just uh, doing some homework, listening to some uh, sick beats on my uh, computer. What are you doing? Oh, a project on human trafficking. Yeah, I actually do know a lot about it. No, 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 no. Actually, the the right bearers are um, are all human beings. You know, just as with any human right. And um, no, no, the no the right bearers are different from the duty bearers. The duty bearers are um, uh, under, you know, Article 4, and um, are institutional law enforcement and border control, you know, local police, and uh, the national government. Oh, so you mean governments and local law enforcement are only responsible for preventing human trafficking? No, not at all. 
Uh, they're also responsible for prosecuting anyone who violates this right. Oh, well, I mean, makes sense, but uh, who are the violators? Uh, the violators are basically anyone who is involved in um, the capture, transport of, um, of human beings. Wow, even the sale? Even the sale, yeah. Okay, well that makes a lot more sense. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, no problem. Um, so what are you doing tonight? You going to listen? Yeah, definitely. Cool, when were you thinking about going? Around 9-ish. Uh, I was thinking more around 2. You want to maybe meet up at the kiosk or something? Yeah, kiosk for sure. Alright, sounds good. All right. Take it Ciao. easy. So where do where are all these slaves coming from? Like Africa or you know what? Yeah, you know Africa is big, but uh, it's bigger in Central Asia, the Philippines. Uh, uh, Bangkok and even Central America. And so, why why these places? Why you know? It's the economic structure of the countries themselves. Uh, you know, maybe it's a third world country, but there's not going to be a lot of options for someone to get to work, and uh, they don't have a secure source for financial income. Maybe one day somebody comes to your door, and you know they offer you a job working in another country, or uh, they'll offer you. You know, it's something that sounds good, and it, there's an, an incentive, a big incentive for the money. But by the time they get there, you know, maybe something that their parents sent them to, thinking it's a good job, it's not what they say it is. You know, it's prostitution, it's uh, working in a factory for making tennis shoes for five cents an hour, or it's going to be fighting a war in a country you've never heard of. All right, well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense, you know. Yeah. And so, people get trafficked, like, within their own countries, or what? Uh, a lot of it. Most of the time it is within countries because it's, it's easy, you know, it's, uh, you don't have to deal with anything. But uh, once in a while, especially for large events, people are trafficked overseas, across borders. But, you know, that's, uh, that's what really grinds my gears. You know, did you understand? Because I, I think I know how it works. I mean, I could just be shooting the shit. I don't but. understand how people can cross the borders like that without, without being stopped, you know? Like, right. where's, where's the border patrol? Where's, where's the government? Where, where are the officials? Right, well, so here, check, check this out. I think I got it. So, you're not allowed to go in here, right? Right, yeah. Tell the people around, I can get in trouble. So I'm like, oops. Oops, sometimes a little smoothly, sometimes a little roughly, but I got through. Right. Okay. So now I, I've got my trapped people because there's no one here. Or yeah. Sometimes the cops let you in and they're saying, oh yeah, why don't you come on in? But hey, hey, dude, come on, man. I don't want you to get caught up there. Some teacher's not going to come back. That's okay, I'll just pay them off. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what I would do if I was a human trafficker. You know, just pay them off and kind of like, you know, do that. ¿Y dónde se lleva las personas con las nenas y nenas? Y yo por lo que tengo entendido, por lo general son de llevar a países acá limítrofes de Argentina, como puede ser Paraguay o Bolivia, lugares más lejanos de la ciudad donde son las chicas, de, donde son abriendo las chicas, digamos, a lo mejor acá a Rosario la llevan a lugares muy lejanos para que sea más difícil encontrar. Sí, también por ahí viceversa pasa lo mismo. Acá eh, hay personas de otros países, paraguayos, bolivianos, que eh, son traídos a Argentina. ¿Y por qué creen ustedes que uh, traficantes uh, llevan a otros países en vez de traerlo solamente en el mismo país? Porque para mí es, más, es así más fácil ocultar su identidad y que sea más difícil rastrearlas de su propio país o ciudad o provincia donde sean, chicas o chicos. También se les dificulta el regreso o, o, eh, o pedir ayuda estando tan lejos. 
on the view. So, Mr. Gomez, seeing that you are a convicted human trafficker, how did you get slaves across the border? Pinche gringa, you know nothing about this. They're corrupt, I can just pay them off easy. Mm -hmm. No sabe nada. How would you do such a terrible thing? Do you not have a conscience? No, that's not how it works. Listen, I gotta get paid, and simple as you guys are corrupt. I'm just doing my job. I don't have to do anything. It's as easy as that. How can you sleep at night? Simple as this. I'm just telling you how it works. I make my money. And really, it's you guys that are corrupt and let this happen. And I do what I have to do. All right, well, thanks for talking to me, Mr. Gomez. Están castigando a la gente que trafica a otros. Bien o mal? Muy poco, por, por lo que yo sé, no, no, se, no se conocen casos eh, judiciales de, de este tipo, condenas, penales, nada. Sí, como que falta mucho todavía por trabajar para solucionar esto. Ya está empezando a hablar, digamos, en la sociedad y ya la opinión pública sabe en general qué es lo que está pasando, que eso es importante. Pero ahora queda al Estado ocuparse más del tema, a las leyes, que se hicieran leyes eficaces, y a los jueces que apliquen justicia a todos estos crímenes, que condenan a los que tienen que condenar. That's perfect. Well, so just, is it recording? Oh, Felipe, how's hey, it going? How are you doing? Doing good, doing really good. Nice, did you finish that project? Yeah, yeah, I just finished it up a little bit ago. Cool. Do you, you learn a lot? I learned yeah, yeah, quite cool. a bit. Yeah. There's really a lot of information out there. A lot of people have been doing a lot of work. It's real depressing though, you know? It's just yeah, like, you know, it's depressing, but you know, there's a lot of hope. And you know, I learned that there's a bunch of stuff going on, a bunch that we can be a part of. To, to change the situation, you know. Yeah, I'd say, you know, with, with education and, you know, just more people knowing about it. Yeah, education is a big part of it, and uh, awareness, you know, it's like we have to be able to share that education with people. You know, it's this metaphor that uh, my friend was telling me about, you know, the story Horn Years Who, you know, Dr. Seuss. You know, you know that one. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> right. Fan. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know how there's like the Horton has this like little planet or something, and there's all these there's people on it, and he, he hears them talking, but no one else can hear him because it's just this one guy's little voice. And Horton's so excited to tell people about it because it's important to him, but no one believes him because they can't hear the voice. So what he does is he organizes this event, this time when everyone can finally share the voice at the same time. So they have a trumpet, and everyone blows a trumpet at the same time. And finally, you know, now the voice can be heard, and Horton hears a who, everyone else hears the who. And so I think a big part of what we can do, you know, is uh, come together horns, so to speak. and blow the horns. Yeah. Yeah. So we gotta blow the horn.
creo que, bueno, está muy bueno que hagan un trabajo, que hayan elegido esta temática que es muy actual, que mucho por escribir, que por leer, que por informar y que para un comienzo está bueno que se junten y hagan trabajo de este tipo. Let's go grab that beer, dude. Kill mess. Want to try that again? Yeah. Let's.